to the Carnage Flood. The Journey of Cletus Cassidy by Seek and Destroy David Michelini, co-creator of Venom, planned to have the symbiote's human host, Eddie Brock, be killed off in The Amazing Spider-Man 400, just 100 issues after his debut in Amazing Spider-Man 300. Then the symbiote was to jump around the Marvel Universe, bonding to different heroes and villains and various stories. That plan fell apart when Eddie and the symbiote together, calling themselves Venom, became far too popular to kill. Marvel told Michelini to create a new character in order to execute his original plan. This time, Michelini came up with someone who was the opposite of Brock, a true psychopath who lacked empathy for innocence. What would this character's name be? A being that would only exist to spread chaos. Ravage, maybe? Chaos? Maybe that was too obvious. Hmm. First, this new, more evil symbiote suit would need a human host. Cletus Cassidy was designed by artist Eric Larson and first appeared in the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man 344. Then, the concept of his other was born. Literally. An offspring of Venom, Carnage first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 361. Cletus Cassidy shared a jail cell with Eddie Brock, but when his symbiote showed up to free him, it left behind an offspring, which wiggled its way into a cut on Cletus's hand and spread throughout his bloodstream. From that fateful day, less than five years after Venom's creation, Carnage began wreaking havoc on the Marvel Universe, and just like his father before him, became far too popular to kill. But who was Cletus Cassidy before he became Carnage? Cletus struggled at life the moment he was born, nearly choking to death on his own umbilical cord. From then on, Cletus Cassidy's mind would continue to spiral further into insanity with each passing year. As a child, Cletus escalated his curiosity of death, using his own family and pets as his guinea pigs. He tortured and killed the family dog using a power drill. He pushed his ailing grandmother down a flight of stairs. He then tried to murder his own mother while she took a bath. After barely escaping with her life, Cletus's mother tried to kill him, but was stopped by Cassidy's father. In his rage trying to protect his son, not understanding why his wife was trying to kill their son, Cletus watched as his father killed his mother. His father was taken to jail, leaving Cletus all alone. Now an orphan, Cletus was sent to the St. Estes home for boys, where he wasn't as tough as he thought he was. Other kids bullied Cletus, recognizing that something was off about him. Most of the administrators did nothing, causing a need for revenge to pump through Cletus's veins. He murdered the disciplinarian administrator, pushed a girl who didn't go on a date with him in front of a moving bus, and burned down the orphanage. Cletus's time at St. Estes taught him the philosophy that life was meaningless and trying to be good was futile. Spreading chaos throughout random, unpatterned bloodshed was his new law. He considered this the ultimate freedom and believed in his dark heart that each person he killed was actually being freed from this futile existence. To him, he was helping people. Cletus became a serial killer, taking the lives of 11 people that the government and the state of New York knew about, yet he always boasted that there were a lot more bodies out there. When he was captured, he was sent to Rikers Island Prison, where he shared a cell with Eddie Brock. Cletus Cassidy, a man who believes that each life he takes is a gift he is bestowing on his victims, is now the human host of a violent symbiote, the first to be born in Earth's atmosphere, where Venom has a sense of justice pass on to it by bonding with Peter Parker, then Eddie Brock. Carnage only wants to murder and free as many souls as he can. After becoming Carnage, Cletus has brought even more misery and destruction to the Marvel Universe. In his first encounter with Spider-Man, the Wallcrawler has to make an uneasy alliance with his enemy Venom in order to stop Carnage. Together they do, and Cassidy is taken away to a Supermax prison. In Maximum Carnage, Cassidy is taken from the Vault, a Supermax for supervillains, to Ravencroft Institute, a facility for superhuman criminally insane individuals. Hoping to find a cure for Cletus's level of madness, blood is drawn from him, which enables Cassidy to transform into Carnage once more and break free. Carnage recruits Shriek, Demogoblin, Carrion, and Doppelganger to take over New York City. With the help of Shriek's psychic powers, he also drives ordinary New Yorkers to attack one another. Carnage and his new family, as he calls them, are defeated by Spider-Man, Venom, 
Cloak and Dagger, Deathlock, Captain America, and more, with Carnage and Shriek sent back to Ravencroft. In the years that followed, Cletus broke out of Ravencroft a number of times. He tried to kill his only childhood friend, Billy Bentime, but failed when Spider-Man intervened. The Carnage symbiote bonded with Ben Riley, Spider-Man's clone, who then tried to destroy the symbiote and himself by taking a lethal burst of microwave energy, but the symbiote got away and Ben lived. The suit crawled back to a weak Cassidy. Cletus then tortured guards and staff of Ravencroft before escaping to encounter the Silver Surfer, a being he feared due to the genetic memories passed down to him from previous symbiotes that watched the Surfer and Galactus devour a world that the symbiotes had conquered. The Silver Surfer sealed Cassidy in an unbreakable prison, seemingly for eternity. Soon after, Venom breaks into Ravencroft to reabsorb the Carnage symbiote into his own body, destroying it. Driven even more insane without his symbiote, Cletus covers himself in red paint and continues his killing spree, claiming that he still has some of Carnage's strength. Spider-Man easily defeats him. A year later, Cassidy gets pulled into the Negative Zone, where he's guided by a strange voice to another symbiote that was kept sealed in the strange dimension. As Cletus bonded with it, the mysterious voice reveals itself to be the remnants of the original Carnage symbiote, which absorbed the new symbiote to regenerate itself and become Carnage once again. When Venom finds out that Carnage is pregnant, he tries to kill both Carnage and the offspring. He fails when Spider-Man intervenes, and the offspring bonds with police officer Patrick Mulligan, becoming the anti-hero known as Toxin. When the villains escape the Raft prison, the sentry flies Carnage outside Earth's atmosphere and rips him into two. Once again, Carnage is not dead, and neither is Cletus Cassidy, as it's revealed that the top half of his body was preserved by the symbiote and repaired by a prosthetics company. Without his legs, Cassidy reclaims the symbiote and becomes Carnage once more, battling Spider-Man and Iron Man on a quest to rebuild his Maximum Carnage family. Some time passes, and Carnage is once again pregnant. This time, the suit tries to bond with Shriek, but ends up bonding to a new character named Tanisha Knives, creating Scorn. On the run from Spider-Man and Iron Man, Carnage arrives in Doverton, Colorado. He bonds the town folk to copies of his own symbiote. Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hawkeye, The Thing attempt to defeat him, but all except Spider-Man are bonded to Carnage's copies. Now alone, with a few surviving town folk, Spider-Man teams up with Dr. Tannis Knives as Scorn, along with the separated parts of Hybrid, which make up Agony, Phage, Riot, and Lasher who were all sent in by the government to take down Cassidy. As the battle ensued, it was clear more help would be needed. In came Flash Thompson, Agent Venom. Agent Venom is about to kill Carnage, putting a gun in his mouth, but Spider-Man stops him. Scorn uses a device that she built to permanently remove the symbiotes from Carnage and Venom. Scorn separates and captures the Carnage symbiote, but allows Agent Venom to escape. Carnage escapes prison yet again with the help of Microns, Agent Venom once again is sent in as Cletus Cassidy makes his way to Houston, Texas and in the path of Kane, the Scarlet Spider. Carnage kidnaps a doctor and escapes into the microverse, but Venom and Scarlet Spider retrieve him and save the doctor. Scarlet Spider impales Cassidy through the eye, lobotomizing him, sending Carnage into a catatonic state. The symbiote keeps Cletus's body alive, but Cassidy's brain and mind are permanently damaged, which leaves the symbiote in control. Now lobotomized, Cletus is broken out of prison by the Wizard and the Claw, who intend to recruit him into the Frightful Four. The Wizard tries to take control of Cassidy's mind, but can't due to the damage, so he then transfers the symbiote to Dr. Carl Malice, who dubs himself the Superior Carnage. Wizard blows up the hideout with Cassidy still inside, seemingly killing him, but as we already know, Cletus is not so easy to kill. Dr. Malice, aka the Superior Carnage, is defeated by Spider-Man, and the suit returns to Cassidy, now able to repair his brain damage. Deadpool, believing it was his destiny to hunt Carnage, bonds with the four symbiotes, Phage, Riot, Lasher, and Agony, to kill Cletus once and for all. Like everyone before him, Deadpool fails at killing Carnage, but does manage to trick him into wounding Shriek and turning himself back in to the authorities. An event called Axis turns all of the villains in the Marvel Universe into good guys for a short time allowing Carnage to become the hero he was never meant to be. Filled with the irresistible urge to be a hero, Carnage returns to New York and goes around saving people, largely oblivious to the fact that he is causing more harm than good. He does manage to defeat a new Sin Eater and save a journalist named Alice in the process. 
At the end of the Axis storyline, a gene bomb is activated which could kill millions, if not more. Carnage, a temporary hero, sacrifices himself to contain the blast with his own symbiote. Cassidy once again cheats death, though he lost the lower half of his body in the process and traveled to carefree Arizona to pay a visit to a new friend he made during the time he was a hero, Sam Alexander, aka Nova. Cassidy tries to kill Sam's mother, but he arrived as Nova in time to save her and defeat Cassidy soon after, sending him back to Rikers. Cletus escapes again, as usual, but this time is lured into a trap by FBI agent Claire Dixon, John Jameson, aka Manwolf, and Eddie Brock as the new Toxin. During this battle, Carnage meets a cult who worships Cthon, and told Cletus that he's part of a prophecy told in the Darkhold Tome. Carnage hijacks a boat so he could reach an island and resurrect Cthon to fill his prophecy, with the promise of a reward to him from Cthon itself. Claire arrives on the boat to stop Cletus, but instead she gets abducted and bonded to Carnage's now third offspring, Rays. Carnage arrives on the island where he resurrects Cthon, only to receive no reward and ultimately be ignored by the godlike creature. A girl named Jubal had a piece of the power from Carnage, so Eddie Brock gave his toxin symbiote to her and he absorbed the Ray symbiote from Claire. Jubal and the Toxin symbiote became an angelic knight and defeated Cthon, resulting in the death of Toxin. Then the team uses the Darkhold Tome against Carnage by separating the symbiote from Cletus, losing Claire in the process. From there, the Carnage symbiote is stolen and given to Norman Osborn for a brief time, turning him into the Red Goblin. As the Poisons launch an all-out assault on the Marvel Universe in Venomized, they search for Cletus Cassidy, who is no longer bonded with Carnage. The Poisons bond Cletus with a symbiote of their own, then infect him with a poison to have Carnage under their control. Due to his mental instability, Cletus was able to resist assimilation. He battled Venom and Spider-Man, nearly killing them both before being tossed back into space by Venom. This brings us to a few months ago, when Cletus's body drifted back to Earth, burning horribly in the atmosphere before crashing down on land. He is found soon after by Dr. Knives and the new cult that she has aligned with, which believes Cletus really is part of a prophecy, just not the one spoken about in the pages of the Darkhold Tome. They have discovered that anyone who has ever bonded, no matter how briefly, with a symbiote, still carries a small piece of the symbiote with them, which the cult has dubbed a Codex. Having learned about Null, an ancient godlike being born in the darkness before the Big Bang, and the creator of the symbiote race, the cult wants him to be free from Clintar, which acts as a locked cage, imprisoning the Dark Lord. Cletus Cassidy is their key, so once again Cletus escapes death when the cult resurrects him. Dr. Knives sacrifices herself and feeds the Codex within her to awaken Cletus, sending him on a new mission to gather all of the Codices, rebuild himself as the Grendel of Null, and bring the universe back to its original state, complete darkness. Tune in to our next episode as we begin the next chapter in the life of Cletus Cassidy with our review of Absolute Carnage number one. And don't forget to come back each week as we not only review and discuss each issue of the Absolute Carnage miniseries, but all the tie-in issues as well as we begin our Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog.